Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. I, uh, I'm so, I just want to thank you for having me here this morning. Thank you, Pastor Jules, for inviting me to speak. Um, I belong to a tribe of Ilocanos. Who, who among you here are Ilocanos? Oh, Ilocano. <laughs> I'm proud to be an Ilocano. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, a lot of Ilocanos pala were here, are here. Praise the Lord. And, uh, um, for this morning, no, uh, I just want to talk about faith. Yeah. Not just a simple faith, but an aggressive faith. A faith that will really overcome the world. So, before we do that, we just bow our heads and let us pray. Father in heaven, we are so thankful of this very wonderful day that you have given us. An opportunity for us again, Lord, to hear from you. Lord, as we prepare our hearts, you speak unto us. Speak, Lord, and we will listen. We thank you and we ask for the Holy Spirit to just be with us and guide us. And to give us wisdom and knowledge to the Lord that uh, we'll be able to comprehend more of your word, your message today. Thank you, Lord, that you will not allow us, Lord, to just miss a word. Because we know, Father, that your message today will give us strength, that will encourage us. For us, Lord, to really serve you more and even, Lord, to advance more of your kingdom. Be with us, Lord. May your presence give us the joy and peace and as we listen to your message, to your word today. Father, we thank you for this, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So, my topic here is faith in the face of fiery furnace. Or how do we respond when our faith is being challenged? No? So, our text will be in Daniel chapter 3. Yeah, Daniel chapter 3, 16 to 18, and it says there, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to give you an answer concerning this matter. If it is be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. So if this be so, or verse 18, but if not, be it known to you, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. So the background, the background of the story is King Nebuchadnezzar. So we all know King Nebuchadnezzar is the king of Babylon. So King Babylon, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had constructed a golden statue or a golden image that was a 90 feet tall 90 feet tall and with that he issued a decree that when the people will hear the music okay, will hear the music and people uh, will hear the music they were to bow down and worship to that statue which he had built so that's the decree Oh, so if you are in, a Bab in, in, in Babylon and you are one of these people in Babylon and when you heard the music you have to bow down and you have to worship the statue which King Babylon had built or if you will not do that if you will not bow down and worship the statue so what the king will do or what will happen to you they would be thrown these people who will not bow down to the statue, they would be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And you know the story, is it? So you know the story that these three friends, Hebrew friends, did not obey the king. And then they were thrown out to the furnace of blazing fire. So we will continue with that story later. My question here this morning, and just want to ask this question, has your faith ever been tested? Amen. Who among you here that your faith has been tested? I mean really, really put to the test. 
So all of us here are faith are, have ever been really been tested. No? So Okay. So what are these things or things that challenge our faith? So I have, so maybe I, I you agree with me if I will say trials and suffering is one thing that will challenge our faith. Our trials and suffering. And of course, we also have temptation. But, so temptation will also challenge our faith. We do have all these temptations. We go through, we pass through temptations. And our faith was being challenged. No? And that is the, I think, number one weapon of the enemy to challenge our faith. To make us really uh, be away with the Lord, with our God, temptation. And of course, also, so I, I, uh, no, I, I noticed this. Even me, I experienced this. That one thing that will that challenge our faith here is an answered prayer. Mm -hmm. you know, an answered prayer. Why? Because when we uh, we pray for something and then. We feel that God is not answering our, our prayers. We, we, we tend to, you know, we tend to, uh, uh, to, to uh, go away with the Lord or, no, to throw our back with the Lord. No? An answered prayer is also one thing that would really test our faith. So many today claim the Christian faith. They claim that, the, that Jesus, to believe Jesus, is their Savior and that they obey God. But when they are faced with a lot of challenges in their lives or even temptations, what happened here is they give up their faith. Agree? Would you agree with that? Amen. You know? So Christians or many, a lot of people, we only claim faith in Christ because of its culturally it's culturally value. But when this faith, our faith, requires sacrifice, then our faith is no longer existent. And we give in to the values and morals of this world. What I mean is, we compromise. So this faith is not true. So this faith is not true, but a faith that is only superficial. No? It is a faith that only sees God. It is a faith that only sees God to get things that we want. And it's not the faith that the Lord wants. No? We only believe for, for our own. We only believe the things that we want from God. No, that's not faith. No? When they do not receive things that they have requested from the Lord, what we do, what, what Christians do are, is they, we abandon God. So when our faith is being tested by, by fire, we desert God and cling to ourselves and our lives. Amen. It happens, I mean, and it will, only, it, it will possibly happen to us if we will not be careful no, to keep our faith with the Lord. In Luke chapter 9, verse 24, it says that who, for whoever would save his life, listen to this, for whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for the sake, for the sake of Jesus, for the sake of God, will save it. Amen. Amen. So there will be many times our faith are being tested in this life. And this even a promise found in the scripture in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 to 7. It says there that in this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes do, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory 
and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So trials, various trials, testings, these were a promise found in the scripture. It will surely come. It will be 101% that will come to us, to our lives. No, This will come. These tests are used to purify our faith. The purpose of having these trials, of having all this, of this uh, fire, blazing fire in our lives, or these testings are to purify our faith and build our perseverance. Amen? Amen? We may not always resist every temptation, but there is but God is there to forgive us when we fall and able to keep us from stumbling again in the future. Amen? The good thing is when we fail, when we fall into temptations, and sometimes we surrender, we give up, God is there. The song here said that we will never be alone. Amen? Amen? I believe, I trust in God that I will never be alone. Amen. That is our God who will keep us. But it is up to us if we will not to give up or not to abandon, abandon God. But if we fail or if we fall into various trials or temptations, no, the good thing is we could come to Him and ask for repentance and ask for His gift forgiveness. And God will forgive us. With these three, three Hebrew friends, it would have been easy to blend with their new culture in that place. Because these three, three Hebrew friends, they were a captive. No? Captive with Daniel. They were a captive from, uh, from Israel. They were captive. They were brought, brought them to, to the Babylon, the, to Babylon. So it would have been easy to blend with their new culture and to rationalize their accommodation of their Babylonian lifestyle with its idolatry and promiscuity. They could say that, oh, because we are here in this Babylon, so we could, we could uh, flow no, with what they believe, or that we could, no, they could compromise, but not to these three Hebrew friends. These men have done nothing to deserve their present situation. So why should they stick their necks out for a God who could not keep his people out of bondage and refuse to answer prayer? I would like you to uh, read this one. Okay, Philip Yancey. In his this, uh, uh, book, Disappointment with God, he said that some people lose their faith because of a sharp sense of disappointment with God. They expect God to act a certain way and God lets them down. Others may not lose their faith, but they experience a form of disappointment. They will believe God will intervene, they pray for a miracle, but their prayers come back unanswered. This happens no? to us. But what will be our response? What will be our response with this? So instead of being rewarded of their refusal to serve and worship the golden image, these Hebrew men, these three friends, were faced with a threat of death. They were being threatened with, with, with death. No? So if we will not worship, if you will not worship, the king said, the decree of the king, if you will not worship, you will immediately be cast into the midst of furnace of blazing fire. And the, the king said to them, What God is there who can deliver you out of my hands? So that is the challenge here. Okay? So this is the challenge. This is the challenge for these three Hebrew friends. So now the question here is, How did... These three young friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, stay on their feet to stand on their situation. To stay on their feet to stand. Not to obey the issue or the issue decree of the king. So what did they 
do to stand on their feet during a situation that had caused others to stumble and fall. So I will just uh, suggest three following for you, three following things for you to consider. What made them stand on their faith with the Lord that never, they never have, per, uh, have, have compromise. No? What made them really strong enough to really, um, to really stand with their, with their conviction? To, to believe in the Lord. What made them stand? Uh, so three things I will, I will share this morning. Number one is, these people, they were men of conviction. No? As their faith was being challenged with that very moment, no? the first thing that we could see from these three friends were they were men of conviction. In verse 16, in response to Nebuchadnezzar attempt to give them a second chance, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to give you an answer concerning this. In fact, these three friends are saying, O king, we don't need to discuss or to argue with this matter because you know what will be our response. Don't waste your time. Because we will not change our minds. And this is what we call conviction. Amen? What is conviction? Conviction refers to the state of being convinced and confident that something is true. Amen? It means a strong persuasion or belief. In other words, conviction stands opposed to a doubt of skepticism. And when we think of a man of conviction, we also think in terms of action and direction. We think of a person whose convictions have different impact on how he lives. That is his conviction on what he does, says, and where he goes. By a man of biblical convictions, we mean a man whose convictions are derived from scripture and whose convictions affect him scripturally amen so their actions their actions were not the product of convenience and comfort no but of conviction they were men of they they were men of made mind, minds who did not need to test the wind to determine if they need to change their behavior or to accommodate their current circumstances they did not told the king, King, please give us one minute, please. Or give us one hour to think about this. To think what you are offering to us. To think of this chance that you are giving us. Can you give us one hour? We'll just have a short meeting here. In Dipolo, but they have really, when the king have given them a chance, oh, I'm giving you a chance. Who will, who will, who will deliver you? Who will help you? What God Oh, who is your God who will deliver you? Immediately they responded. What is their response? Oh, king, please, don't waste your time. But we are, our conviction is not to really obey you. That is their conviction. Because they are confidently believing something, something that they had learned from the Lord. Amen. These people, why? Because why these people, they were men of conviction? Because they read the word. They know the word. They know the scriptures. They know our God. Amen. Amen. They know that the Lord will come. No? That the devil there are not alone. Because God, they believe that God will come. Amen. They had no need to defend what they knew to be right and they refused to blackmail God. Oh God, if you get the king of our box, then we would bow. No? Or they were motivated but but what was right and but what by what what pleases God. That's conviction. Amen. Why they responded immediately that they will not obey the king? Because they knew that what they will be doing is right. And then they knew that what they will be doing our souls have suggested compromise. Have we 
experience all this all the time. Many times that, no, when we were in that blazing fire of our lives, iba dumarating. This comes the enemy, and then he will suggest, oh no, go, don't go to Bible study, don't go to the church. No, they will not help you. Your God will not help you. No, I'm sure that time the enemy is present and suggesting something to compromise for this Hebrews to compromise. Or he may be, he may have suggested something like following, like this following. You know that this image is nothing. So just bow down your body but remain standing on inside. <laughs> just bow down but your heart is not standing. Your heart is standing before God. Is that possible that you are bowing with the statue but your heart is not bowing? With no? That's, you know what, that, that's something that we do, sometimes we do that as justification. But it's not, that's not possible. Because if we want to please God, we give everything to Him. What, what the scripture says, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your, with all your, with all your money. <laughs> with all your what? Everything! I mean, it's not possible that you're bowing down, no, physically, but your heart is not bowing, and bowing down before the Lord. That's not possible. Because we will just give everything to the Lord. Amen? Amen. There's this story. I want to, to, I just want to share this story, you know. The story of a Methodist evangelist named Peter Cartwright, who was known for his uncompromising preaching was known with his conviction. One day, the President of the United States, Andrew Jackson, Jackson, uh, the late President, the, the Andrew Jackson, old, rough, and ready himself, came to Cartwright Church. And then the elders warned Pastor Cartwright not to offend the President. Maybe they said that, oh, Pastor Cartwright, it is good and, and it's an opportunity for us to have a visitor like Mr. President. So Pastor Cartwright, may we suggest that can you be careful of what you will be teaching? Can you be careful of what you will be talking to the president that the president would be offended? So that's the, the meeting. Huh? The elders are really saying this. Oh, Pastor, be careful of what you will be teaching. Content that this pastor would not say anything to discredit the church. So the elders, no, the elders retired to the sanctuary. But when Cartwright got up to speak, ito na, the first words out of his mouth were, ito, I understand that the President Andrew Jackson, that Jackson is here this morning. I have been requested to be very guarded in my remarks. Let me say this, Pastor Cartwright said, Andrew Jackson will go to hell if doesn't if he will doesn't he doesn't repent of his sin. The entire congregation gasped with shock at Cartwright's boldness. They wondered how this young preacher could dare to offend or offend the tough old general in public. But after the service, everyone wondered how the president would respond to Cartwright. No, binabantay na nila. What, what the president will do with pa uh, pastor or pastor? Let's let's watch this and you know there is a wondering what will be the response. But when Andrew Jackson met the preacher Cartwright at the door, he looked him in the eye and said, "The president said to Cartwright, Mr. Pastor." Sir, if I had a regiment or regiment of men like you, I could conquer the world. Uh, what an applause, what an appreciation. Uh, so that's his conviction. That is the, the, uh, the, the boldness. No? So he told that if this man will not repent of his sin, he will go to hell. <laughs> what a word. Diba? So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew what they believed, and they believed what they knew. Their deep certainty concerning God's will 
meant that they value God's command, commandments above their own lives. They do not choose death, but neither they, did they run from it. Mamatay kung mamatay. These men could remain standing because they were men of conviction. That's their faith. Amen? Amen. Their faith were being challenged, but this is their conviction. We will never bow down because this we believe in our God. And then, the, the second one is, they were men of confidence. They were men of confidence. So these men were not only men of conviction, that, but they were also men of confidence. In verse 15, here, Nebuchadnezzar asked them, Who is God who will deliver you out of my hands? That's what the, the, the king had said to them, had told them, Who is this God who will deliver you? But with confidence, these three young friends told the king in verse 17 he said if this be so our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of your hand that's confidence tarating ang Diyos namin God will come and deliver us hintay hintay ka lang king wait wait a minute <laughs> ano so they tell Nebuchadnezzar of the wonderful, powerful God that they serve. Amen. God will come. The one who we, the God whom we serve will come to deliver us. This is a confidence. This is faith. They believe God that will come. Their faith is rooted on how powerful God is rather than how strong they are themselves. And you know what? You know what? Sometimes we you know that the first song that we have sung a while back here is a very, very powerful song. It's a way maker. It's a miracle. You know? Miracle worker. Miracle worker. worker no? This is what, who our God is. But when we, sometimes when, when our faith when being tested, where is God who is a way maker? Where is God who is a miracle worker? Iba? Akalimutan natin. We forgot. And then it, it uh, you know, it black the problems. No? The bigger we see our problems, we look to our problems, the lesser our God. No? What is bigger? The, ano bang kadi, the pastor, coin? Their homes. What is bigger? The their homes or the, the sun? <laughs> no? But sometimes, the their homes is bigger. Because when we focus on the dear homes, the sun is smaller. No? So, like to our problems, when we focus on problems, the problems are so big, but our God is too small. Amen? So, this faith, their faith is that they see God who is big, who will deliver, who will come and deliver them. That's confidence. Amen? They do not say that they can deliver themselves, but that God can deliver them by His what? Mighty power. Amen. They do not trust in anything of this world to save, to save them, but on their God, our God. So what is confidence? Confidence is, it is a certainty that enables reliance. Certainty. You are certain that something will happen, but you have to rely on that. Certain, big sabit sigurado ka. You are sure that will be that they will make it happen. No, it will it will be possible. So these men were motivated by faith in God's ability. Amen. They were motivated by the faith because they believe in God who is powerful, who has this ability to deliver them. So they serve a God who could do exceedingly abundantly above all that they could ask or think. He is the one who introduced himself to Abraham as Almighty God and whom Jeremiah declared, nothing is too hard for them, for us, or for thee. No? Yan po yung pagkakilala. Yeah. Another story. A young boy traveling by airplane to visit his grandparents sat beside a man who happened to be a semin seminary professor. No? Imagine a young boy and a seminary professor. No? 
Magkatabi po sila, no? In, uh, in an airplane. So the boy was, re was reading a Sunday school take-home paper. So, no? Imagine that the boy is reading a Sunday school take-home paper. It's, and then, when the professor saw that the young lad, the young boy is reading, so the professor thought he would have some fun with this young boy. Parang to test this young boy. And then, um, the seminary professor turned to the young boy and said, Young man, hey young man, said the professor, if you can tell me something, something that God can do, I will, I will give you a big shiny apple. If you can tell me something God can do, can do, I will give you a big shiny apple. Oh, what a reward. What a challenge and what a reward. A shiny apple? Big apple? And then the boy thought for a moment. He thought for a moment and then the young boy replied, Hey, mister, if you can tell me something that God can't do, I'll give you a whole barrel of apple. <laughs> God can do everything. Amen? Amen. Because nothing is too hard for the Lord. Amen. That is our God. Amen. This is our God. So they were confident. They have this confidence that God will come. And deliver. Now, number three, last. The question here is, what if? What if will? What if God did not come? What if God will not answer your prayers? What will you do? Bye, bye, Lord. You will not answer my prayer. But you are my God, who is powerful enough, Lord. To deliver me, to deliver us. The question is, what if God did not come? So they told the king, "Our God, whom we serve, is able. He will, He will come." But you see, the word here. But if not. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. They were men of commitment. Ano sa nila? Patay kung patay. But we will not compromise, my king. Yes, you can throw out to that burning, a burning, blazing fire. But we will not, we will not change our decisions. Amen. We will still be faithful to our God. We are still believing that our God will come. They were men of commitment. Amen. 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 So, mga kapatid, brethren, if we're, our faith were being challenged, so let us be con let's continue to be committed to Him. Amen. 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 That even our our prayers, no, God is not answering with our prayers, or maybe He's, you know, uh, doing something, no, something different. Let us continue to serve Him. No. So who among you here believe that we have a big God? Amen. 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 That there are no obstacles too big for Him. He can handle our diseases. He can handle under our finances. He can even ha handle our biggest problems. Am I right? Amen. Amen. So that's not a debate. Because that is the truth. But there is an element of the unknown for most of us. Will we remain faithful even he doesn't intervene? Or do we feel entitled? What does a man in a bandage long for and pray for? No? What does a man in bandage long for and pray for? Freedom. Amen. What does a man who is sick long for and pray for? Healing. How about a man who is in need? Provision. Diba? So what does this man do? When weeks turn into months and months into years and freedom and healing and provision does not come. What this man will do? So can we say, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, 
can we say with them this word? But even if it does not, let it be known to you, O King, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Even though, Lord, there's no freedom, there's no healing, there's no provision, I will still serve you, O God. Amen. Their but, not, but if not prevents the story from being turned into a false promise that God will save every people of every faithful person from suffering and death. Diba? Kasi ang thinking natin, our thinking is that, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, some, God is uh, sovereign. No? He knows best. Alam niya ginagawa niya sa atin. Okay? Example here is this man, the heroes of faith. What, why God have allowed them, God allowed them to re- go through with these trials. They were, what, they were beaten. They were sown in two. Hallelujah. No? But they were being recognized and acknowledged that they are heroes of faith. Why? Looking with this faith, no? No? To, to be sure that he is having a straight line going to the man. The second lad or the second boy kept looking at his companion to see what they are doing. So, no? But the third boy was the winner. Why? For his steps were straight in the snow. He had kept his eyes on the goal ahead of him. No matter what will happen, his goal is for that man. He will approach that man. Amen? Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, brethren, our goal is for Jesus. Amen. Amen. And what will bring us to Jesus? is our faith. Amen. Amen. Our faith that will overcome the world. As we are going to Jesus, our journey going to Jesus, there will be, we will be passing through a lot of, you know, circumstances, a lot of, you know, problems, trials, sufferings. But let us continue to look unto Jesus. Focus on the Lord Jesus. Amen. So this morning, as I, I just, as I call on the worship team, and can we just sing the song, yung, the oceans, oceans? No? So as the worship team has sing, Pastor, do we still have time? Oh, Pastor? So yeah. I was led by the Spirit today to just pray for you with our pastors here. So as this, as we, after the song, as we sing the song, I just want to challenge everyone. If you are believing something today, if you really believe that God will do something in your life today, maybe in your family, in your work, or whatever your circumstances are, I would just, I just ask you to come here in front. And we will pray for you. If you have the faith, believing something that God will do, believing that God will, will uh, be showing you great things in your life, or you are praying for something, and you want to believe today, and you have to offer that faith to the Lord. Lord, as I come before you today, as I step out of my faith, I come here today to believe that you will do something great for whatever that circumstance, whatever that situation, whatever that need you have, I will just want you to come here in front. As I step out, a step of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And as we sing this song, as we are singing this song, come on, let's just connect our hearts to the Lord. Let's just connect our hearts to God. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord Jesus. To great and Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Your may fail. And there I'll find you in the mystery yes, In the ocean's oh, deep my, my faith will stand yeah, My faith will stand, Lord So I will call upon your name Call upon you, Lord Jesus
from the river now come on let's drink drink from the river the fresh water from the river yes Lord let there be let there be refreshing upon each one of us a refreshing for our faith Lord in the name of Jesus we drink that water Lord may you refresh us Lord may you refresh each one of us Lord in the name of Jesus yes let it be time of refreshing today, Lord. Yes, so that we will be going out. We will leave this place being refreshed, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Even our faith will be refreshed, oh God. Salamat, Panginoon, at Beatrice. And this time, Lord, we just want to thank you because we know we have received what we have believed today in the name of Jesus. We have received it, Lord, by faith in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Come on, let's give thanks to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We bless your name, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the thanksgiving. 